Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening to Checking In with Mary Lynn. Please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. We're 20 episodes in, which means it's time for a famous re-release of one of my favorite episodes where I talk about my son's basketball coach, maybe in an inappropriate way, I'll, I'll admit, but it's full of honesty as and heart as well. And also I talk about Trader Joe's and it, it's, it's very pertinent to fall, going back to school, things I'm thinking about. I want to know if you relate. Please let me know. Also, Indianapolis, I will be at Horror Hound this weekend. Tickets on my website. Thanks. today what are you thinking about when you're walking down the street is your head in a cloud don't you want to know what's going on let's go checking in with mary lynn checking in with mary lynn checking in with mary lynn let's check in with Hi, everybody. It's me, Mary Lynn. Let's podcast. Uh, we have a basketball game today. Uh, we had one yesterday. Now, our, our schedule at the Parks and Rec basketball where we play the league was messed up because of the teacher strike. Usually there would only be one game a week, one to two practices per week and one game. But the schools were closed, so we couldn't use the courts for the games. And now they're stacked up a little bit. And my son is nervous. He is not happy about having two games in a row. I think it's kind of cool, but I'm an adult that's lived a lot of life, and I know about being in the zone. For him, he wanted a lot of downtime in between the games. He didn't want to play two in a row. And um, I got to admit, he's pretty fierce out there on the court. He's fast. He's fierce. He's 10 years old, so that's... um, the level that we're at right now. And I got to say, I'm a little annoyed with the coach. I didn't verbalize that to his face. I'm like, hey, hey, great. How are you? And um, I was a little overzealous when I first met him. He was like, you look familiar. And I immediately was like, yeah, that's because I'm an actor. (laughs) I get that all the time. And he just looked at me like, wow, that was way too much information. And I was just being overly friendly. I don't know. It must have been a manic episode or maybe I hadn't talked to anybody in the whole day, whole day. And then it just got bottled up and came out of my mouth. Anyway, the point is now that we're a little bit into the season, he canceled practice last week and then admitted it was because his kids had parties to go to. And then yesterday when we started at the game, and it wasn't really gelling and people were all over the place. I just kept whispering to Matt. I was like, huh, how were those parties yesterday? You think you want to have a, uh, get your team together the night, day before the game? No, it's probably better to go to a party. And I, it's weird how it, I just started judging this guy and the way he was coaching and got really angry that he wasn't showing them any plays deliberately because I watched them and I was like, these guys are lost out there. They're they're just shooting all over the place. They're thinking about where to go and what to do, like making up their own plays as it goes. So it's making their shooting sloppier because they're trying to think about two or three things at once instead of drilling plays with the other players so that they get a little bit of it in their memory. Like, Oh, when we do this, I go here. (laughs) Instead, they're trying to think about that and put their shots up and the adrenaline of the game. And it's almost like they were all little individual, um, which I know you are in a game, you are individually playing, but, but sort of making each making their own decisions instead of being together on certain plays. Uh, and I got real mad at the coach which is kind of hilarious. And Matt was just being real cool. He had his hands in his pockets and I kept going over to him and going, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? He's just letting him out there all, all willy nilly, letting him out there, uh, free balling it, free burden it out there. What's, what's his problem? Does he want to not want them to know any plays? He's treating them like they're babies. Why didn't he teach them any plays? And Matt's like, I know, but Matt's basic attitude 
uh, which usually he's the one that gets more, especially about the details of basketball. Cause I don't really know what the hell is going on, but he was, he was playing it real cool. He said, you know, this it's, it's parks and rec. This is what you get. And it's, and yeah, the, the coach is a vol- volunteer. He's a super nice guy. He's doing the best he can, but yeah, I got real worked up because it's like if we were, co- if our family was coaching, we'd cancel the parties and get to practice. I'm all right, people. I'm all right. Cause we want the W. I learned that last night on the uh, Celtics warrior game. They just call a win a W, which is hilarious because it takes way longer to say W than it does win. <laughs> uh, but it's got some swagger, you know, and I think I'm going to start doing that, especially just when my son's hanging out with his friends, I'll go like, you guys going to get a W today? You going to go out, go, go out there and W this day today? But it's true. I know nothing about sports. It's like white noise to me. There's this serious um, channel or radio show called Bennington. And it was really nice because the guy reached out to me because sometimes they do these polls where they ask a bunch of comedian stuff and he asked me about my Super Bowl pick and I was like uh honestly did not even know who was playing I know I know it's not right and it's not American I did not grow up in a household where sports were a thing and they weren't talked about and I never played sports so it just never was in my head and now I'm kind of interested but I still sometimes I'll be watching and I'll be focused and then my mind will wander and it just looks like white noise to me. Unless there's somebody sitting next to me explaining to me play by play. It has helped a little bit. It's I'm starting to break through. I don't know if I ever will fully. I can. I watched a game for leisure last night with my son. Um, I still couldn't tell you like, oh, this happened in the first quarter. I know that Draymond Green threw the ball out of bounds. I know he missed a couple of free throws and that, um, you know, Steph Curry got a bunch of, a bunch of threes. Okay. So yeah, my point is you would think after being married to the sports guy and basketball being on the house in on in the house for the past 10 years, that some of it would sink in. And also my son being in basketball going on what, four years. I don't know. I have no sense of time. Please don't quiz me on how many years. I don't know exactly. Okay. But you would think I am getting a little bit better, but I still don't know when, what defense they're doing or, or I never catch the fouls. Like when they blow the whistle, I can see something happen, but I'm always like, what was that? What, what was that foul for? I'm real slow on the uptake. And last year I can remember sitting with one mom and we were just giggle and, you know, make our look at it, objectify them. Look how, how, look how cute they are. Oh, they're doing so good. That was a good try. We were more that style of viewer, but there was this other mom. She's so great. A Southern belle. She knew exactly what was going on in the game and she's very invested and she knows how to use her descriptive words and describing the place. She's like, come on boys, let's go Celtics. And she, I remember it was a close game and we had been losing all season and she came and stood by the side of the bleacher. She was pacing. And then at one point it was, you know, three quarters of the game was, it was getting close to the end of the game. And she stood on the side and she said, God, if it is your will, I pray that these boys win this game. And it was just a little bit jarring because I'm not used to people praying aloud nearby me and I like her. She's wonderful. And so when that happens and you do, I do want them to win all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, yeah, I I pray to God too. If if you think that's going to help, but I just, it was just so sweet and so pointed and she had no problem being verbal about it. And then I remember afterwards they did, end up I think they lost by one point and then coach was you know giving this speech but and his speech was nice but it it left uh, it was lacking a little bit like he was like all right good game guys you did really good and she comes in there and she's like I'm sorry hold on a second uh I have something to say and she stood in the center 
and brought all the attention to her, but it was in the nicest possible way because she was focused on the boys. She said, now you guys, you did great out there. You didn't give up. You came together as a team. You worked that defense together. Damon, don't you think I didn't see you out there? And Val, you were like a little Dennis Rodman out there. All those crazy shots. Oh, I saw you trying to get to the bucket and Kevin, I saw your assist and you are most improved and you held on to that ball and she went around to each player, looked them in the eyes, called them by name and described something uh, great that they did. And if she could, she compared it to an NBA player and it just blew my mind. I got so excited at what she was doing that when she was done talking, everybody, I got a little teary and I wanted to try it because I was like, I want to participate, you know? So I said, excuse me, uh, I just have one thing to say too. you guys just on top of what she said, you did a great job. And, um, and then I panicked because I didn't know how to do it. I don't know basketball terms. I couldn't just repeat what she said, right? I had to have my own thing. So I said, and you know, you guys are sexy out there. You got a lot of power. You're not little babies anymore. And um, you're looking hot. And son, I see you about to go into your manhood. And I say, ooh, that's my son. And it's almost like I'm attracted to you a little bit. Like, yeah, you know, you go from. And then, um, you know, I had to take it back and say that, yeah, that's not what I meant. I don't, I don't mean that. I just meant you guys look powerful and virile and, um, I didn't mean to call you guys sexy. I'm sorry. I just don't have a good use of words. Well, and that's just something I made up. It's a comedy bit I'm working on. It's uh, in a very raw form. It's a bit about being attracted to your son as he's playing basketball. I didn't deliver it very well here, but I think you can see how that's going to be hilarious. Maybe the lead in is, do you ever think you're a pedophile? Okay, that was a deep track. And all that about the mom is true. And I think I got that idea of being attracted to your kid. Number one, because they're attra- they're hot. But when I'm sitting out there with the mom and we're like, oh, aren't they cute? It's like this weird fetishy, you know, it's like. You objectify them by calling them cute. And then I just heightened that and exaggerated it. And it's really based on my lack of knowledge and of the game and the nervousness and wanting to say something. Um, Anyway, you get what that is. So that's exciting. I'll keep working on that, guys. Um, So we have a game today. Oh, also yesterday, it's funny when you see parents from the other team and how you just don't talk to that person. There's not even a nod. It's just this one. We didn't even, maybe I'm being overly sensitive. I like it when you say hi and you give a nod, like, Hey, we're all in this together, but it's like the parents of the kids and the other team, we might as well be on the same team, but you're just like icing them out. Like, yeah, we're about to dominate y'all. And you know what? I had those complaints about the coach and then I realized I had to step off because it is just parks and rec and he's a volunteer right and um then we ended up winning the game and now we have another one today he's nervous but um to watch my son honestly go from and matt told me this would happen he said you watch how much they will develop in a year in two years i mean and it's like that with like babies and then you know as they get older there's always different stages and changes like any of you that have uh, babies out there, there's that period of time when if you go away for like two days and you come back and you're like, what did I miss? Cause like every little thing when that baby like comes into its body is such a, um, you notice all those little things that they're doing and it's like the sweetest time. Um, when they get older, I remember when he started, And he doesn't remember this because now he's he's just where he's at and he's striving to be better. But it's like, dude, I remember when you couldn't even really dribble the ball and you'd get so upset because you 
in your mind you wanted to win and dominate but you really didn't even and it was like that was scary because i watched the emotions and the desire to play when you when the fundamentals aren't not scary but it's like he would get really upset and it was hard to explain to him like you got to take it easy and go easy and matt matt told me he's like no, you know what that's a good thing because he's got a passion and not everybody has that and sure enough he's 10 years old and um he did this thing yesterday that had to be explained to me. Now I'm not even going to explain it right, but the coach yelled from across. This coach is so funny. He's really a sweet guy, but what he kept like, he was sitting down and he kept going, spread it out guys, spread it out. And I was sitting over there cursing like, what the fuck would you give them some plays? Like don't sit there and just tell them to spread it out and get to the basket. But then, um, later I forgot what made him so mad. Val, uh, Oh, I think, oh, he just did it. He didn't get it in the basket. And then he, then this kid ran into him and, um, didn't get fouled. And then Val, um, went over to the sidelines and like kicked the chairs. And, and I saw the coach from across the way, kind of put his hand on his back and softly say a couple words to him. And I was like, damn, like, that's why Matt didn't part of why Matt didn't coach this year is like, let Val have to deal with, his emotions in the game and then just watch the coach deal with him. I was like, all right, you got some points back in my book for, I don't know what he said. And then also for my son watching him get that hot headed and that passionate and that upset and then work through those feelings and calm down and get ready to get back in the game. It's, uh, it's exciting and it's cool to see them, to develop. And yeah, that was, that's, that was Matt's point. He's like, you can't teach that to someone if they're like hot headed and it's because they care and they're driven. And, um, oh, so the other thing that was, that was a cool move was that he, he fouled, but he did it at the right time and in the right way that it was at a certain point in the court past the halfway line. So that the other team, the ball went to them, but they didn't get a free throw. Is that right? Get back to me on that. Um, so that was really cool. And then the coach yelled out, good job, Val, smart play. And uh, I was talking to my friend later and he's like, yeah, smart play. Learn how to buck the system, learn the loopholes. And we laughed and laughed, learn, learn a way to get around the system. Um, and then Matt said that he liked the refs of this game because it's like his pet peeve when they call everything because they are younger and, and Matt's like, don't call every little thing that they're doing wrong. Like let them play. And, uh, he was right. I noticed like a good flow to the game yesterday. So hopefully we'll have those same refs again today. And again, you got to appreciate everybody because it's, um, I don't get, I think, I mean, I get really invested. I want my kid to win. I don't get like basketball mom in that way. You know, like you got to win. And I don't, I don't get like, I mean, I feel feelings of competition and, but I don't, um, get ugly in that way. But I would say yesterday was the first time where I was mad at the coach for not for, I felt like he was leaving them out there with no, no plan sort of, you know, and that they weren't able to come together. But yeah, I had to check myself a little bit. I get it. You know, we're going to take it easy. So I'm excited to see what happens today. Um, oh, that Roger Stone, Roger Stone in the news yesterday. I actually didn't even tune in. Uh, I saw the, the clip of him being arrested. By the time anyone listens to this, it's going to be, it's so much happens in every day, but I on CNN, they were talking about, oh, Roger Stone in his uh, polo shirt, and he had shackles around his wrists and around his ankles, and, and they were back and forth, like if it's justified to pick him up in the middle of the night like that. And some people were complaining that they thought that was overly dramatic, and it's like, I don't know what the hell is going on. There has to have been a reason why they did that, right? And he's out on bail, and they must have done that because they wanted to surprise him to try to get more information. Like if there was information in his house, but on the other hand, everything that he probably has already 
you know, these guys are professionals at like hiding stuff. So uh, it must be just really weird to try to sift through and find that inf- information. And maybe it was uh, dramatics to arrest him like that instead of just asking him. Um, but him flashing those Nixon signs, I don't really get it, man. Are we like in living in some like that's a caricature? Like, why would you why would Nixon be your hero? Cause he's known for being a crook. So then you're like, ha ha, like I'm going to get away with stuff. But then there was a reporter standing outside people watching where he got arrested. And they were talking to one lady who was like, well, I'm glad finally uh, justice will be served. And then they talked to another woman who was like, you know, he's a friend of mine and I'm team Roger. So we're just getting both sides. And it's just like, what the hell is going on? You know, what does it matter? What I think. And also why is it in the reporting about his, uh, Oh, he's in a, a polo shirt. They got him in the middle of the night. He just threw in a polo shirt. He's not going to like that. Cause he's a flashy guy. Like that's the way you report about it. What, what is happening? How do, how do I really know what's happening? Do I think they're all shady all the time? And that they hide stuff? Yeah. Do I think they deliberately were looking for those um, emails and uh, that they were gotten, you know, through WikiLeaks with the help of the Russians? Do I think that they sabotaged? Yes, it's been proven that they probably did influence the, um, the election. And do I think that Trump was going to build that and has all kinds of like uh scammy money things that he does. I don't know if it's outright laundering probably, but what about all the people around him that allowed him to be in the position to be elected in the first place? The whole thing is dirty and shady on both sides all the time. And you know, whether you think he's somebody that didn't think he was going to get elected and like he's a light criminal or whether you think he's completely guilty of obstruction and collusion. I mean, they're all definitely guilty of lying and like fudging stuff, paying off people, trying to get information, trying to damage the other person. They're all guilty of that. Um, will they find hard evidence of something else? I don't know. Maybe not. Is he diabolical? I don't know. Is he uh, a puppet to being influenced by Russia and their interests? Yeah, probably. Uh, The scariest part is we don't really know. A friend of mine um, had her stuff combed through by the FBI and her take and she's done nothing. Her take on the whole experience was that methodology where they look for anything to connect you to something that could possibly be bad is just exhausting and um, painstaking. And and she's saying, you know, if they're looking for something, they're going to find it and they're going to bend it in that direction it's really hard to pl- prove blatant stuff if it's not f- findable. And these people are professionals at hiding stuff, professional businessmen. And um, we have, you know, we have problems in our society. <laughs> stuff isn't transparent. People lie to get ahead. People aren't always nice. Um, I, uh, speaking of, uh, lying to get ahead, I was in Trader Joe's and every time there's a line of cars waiting to get in there and they've hired the parking lot, just the parking lot. They've hired a security guard to direct people when a car is leaving a space, when you can get into a space. And as the guy directed me into a space and I turned and it was like, Um, you know, when you, the lines of the, of the parking are off 
you know, and the person's going over the white lines. So uh, this was already happening by the cars on either side of me. So that when I pulled in, my car was driving over the center of uh, white, the white lines of the, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't mar- marked properly. I wasn't in between the lines. I was driving over the lines of the parking. And as I was doing that, I was like, why is everybody squeezed in here? Why are these, um, you know, Target has a different philosophy. There's almost too many parking spaces. It's like, we're so big. You could, you could never fill this up, which brings me to my point, which is it just occurred to me that in my mind, I thought it's, it's creating this image of, Oh, we're just your neighborhood store. We're, we're tucked in here in this funky space. There's, you know, probably, three less parking spots than there should be for how many we're allotting people to come in here for the capacity of the store and how big the parking lot should be to accommodate the flow of traffic. And then as I got into the store, I was like, wait, are these aisles smaller than they should be? Every time I turn a corner, there's three people coming the opposite way around the corner, or I go to get something and someone's right in front of me, or there's an employee coming through with boxes. And same thing when you're standing in line, if there's more than two people in line, the, the lines are going into each other. And then the, the, the area where they put the, the groceries is like so quaint. Every time, it's not in the front of my mind. Every time, though, subtly, I'm like, oh, this is where I put my, it's not the luxurious, uh, the conveyor belt of the of your normal checkout experience where you just luxuriate and putting the stick in between and you've got all the space in the world to let your stuff travel on down there no in trader joe's and there that's this is when it occurred to me i should have known already they're deliberately just fucking with us to give us this image that like, Oh, there's not enough room for you to put, put your groceries on this uh, wood block, this wood slat that we happen to have here that, that will almost accommodate a small handheld basket of, of groceries. And you know, if you have a cart, you, they take, they take it, the cart behind them. And it's always like this haphazard, to give that feeling of the mom and pop, but it's this ingenious, all of a sudden it hit me in the gut. I mean, I know, again, I know it should be obvious that we're being tricked all the time, but I was like, all of a sudden I realized that parking situation, that's part of the plan all along. They designed the store of what it needed, how many spots it needed, and then whoever, the bottom line money person, the CEO, the designer that informs the CEO of here's how, mu- how much money we want to spend. Here's what the design needs to be. They all looked at it. And then the big boss said, all right, that's what we need to accommodate this space. This is how many parking spots we need. Now shorten it by four. Yeah, but you'll always have a traffic jam and there won't be enough. Yeah, shorten it. Make it just a little bit off. Make every parking spot just a little a little, little smaller than you want it to be. And then there'll just be that one funky spot, those couple of spots that just bleed over so that, that just ensuring that it'll always be like a crunch in there. You know why? Because that's going to save us money. And it's also going to give us the image that just we're just a funky thrown together. This is where you get your, your good stuff for a good price. And um, that's all masterminded. That's not the only Trader Joe's parking lot that feels like that. It's not just one of the checkout lines because they're a mom and pop store. Each one is designed with that wood block design with the wood slat that you pull out. They're doing that on purpose to mess with your emotions. <laughs> Do you like that? I'm, I'm talking like it's the seventies. Like we, like we just discovered uh, corporate greed and manipulation, manipulation by design. I mean, it happens to us so often that I got to research the singularity. Is that connected at all where we just become manipulated by outside uh, stimulus and we just move around and try to survive? Like, I just need my spicy cashews and my red wine. Why do you, why you got to fuck with me like this? You're doing it for your own profit. What about me? Well, you gave you a good price. Yeah, but is it really organic? Doubtful. So um, 
I got really excited because I looked at my Instagram because I had posted a picture of myself in my office podcasting and this guy called Aficio Nerdo. Aficio Nerdo says, I'm four minutes into an episode. You know what? This section is called Shout Out uh, Listener of the Week is what I'm going to call it. Listener of the Week. And his name is Aficio Nerdo. He says he is a time traveler, lexical rube, Goldberg engineer. Now, I don't know how this is going to happen. What if Aficio Nerdo doesn't listen to this podcast and he's going to get a complete shout down, shout, shout out and breakdown of his response because I'm so delighted. So I had this, I guess my first um, podcast, I talked about how um, I left the dog poop on someone's lawn. Okay. And, um, I talk about it as a joke in my act. Now, honestly, I don't do it every time. I barely ever do it, but the joke in my act is that it's nighttime and I look over, I look, cause I looked away, you know, when she's pooping, I look back and it's dark and I can't see it. So then my instinct is to go up, oh, must not, must not be there and keep walking and leave the poop there. Okay. So that's my whole thing I have in my act about how I'm living an edgy, dangerous lifestyle and how you got to look out for number one and what's the big deal. Anyway, so he goes, I didn't realize this was, I talked about that in the very first episode of my podcast. I I probably talk about poop every uh, fourth podcast. Okay. So Aficio Nerdo says, I'm four minutes in, in on an episode one of your podcast. You mentioned leaving dog poop on the lawn. I have a trick. I like to call the Kaiser Soze, which... I use on the lawns of my enemies or when I'm too far from a trash can, I make a big show of pulling out a poop bag, dragging it over to the ground near my dog's leavings without actually picking up the mess. Then I treat the bag like it's full until I walk down the street and then just like the now controversial Kevin Spacey in the usual suspects 24 year old spoiler spoiler alert transforms from verbal kint to Kaiser Soze, I flatten the empty poop bag and put it back in my pocket. And if anyone figures it out, it's too late because by then my dog and I were in the wind. <laughs> this is a beautiful uh, description. I find it very literary. I'm very honored that you chose to put that description in my um, IG comments for my inspiration. And I would like to do a shout out to you right now. And I'm looking at your feed, Aficio Nerdo, A-F-I-C-I-O-N-E-R-D-O. Give him a follow if you like dogs and you like cool dudes. He does something with kale in a jar. So maybe he's healthy or he's he's his own Trader Joe's. Um, his dog, Bridget, is... Um, there's a great picture of her lying in what he calls debris and waste. There's a picture of him making his own cold brew coffee. Looks like a pretty cool dude. What's the, okay. The kale thing. What the hell are you doing with kale? Aficio nerdo. He goes, this morning was enough fresh kale to fill a paper shopping bag, a couple pounds of kale, three ounces of powder. Yeah, I don't really understand this post. If he's making powder on purpose, I mean, I'd have to do a real deep dive to see what the hell he's doing with this kale. One is a picture. This is really beautiful. This is one of these simple posts. He's It's a branch from his yard, and he says, Man, nature is beautiful. Even a scrap from my yard is a sight to behold. And it's got this these great, um, uh, where the wood has been cut, um, circles of the growth of the tree it is it's really beautiful and um shout out to you i want to say thank you for oh and there's one where he says goodbye to his dog we all know how that feels he says um he had to say goodbye to his dog named morton who who was well cared for he was a little hellraiser and but he really connected and learned a lot about life this is really sweet um, I'd like to give a shout out to me for doing my first and a shout out to you for uh, for this whole section of the podcast called uh, called listener listener of the day. Thank you so much, Aficionado. Um, 
starting on May 1st, I'm still on his feed. He's, he took a picture. This is kind of funny. And I totally agree with you. It's a picture. It says it's from Luxury Nails. And he just took like a picture of an announcement at the business. It says starting on May 1st, we will no longer accept appointments on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The weekends will be, we will be reserved for walk-ins only. And he's, he says reserved for walk-ins seems contradictory. I feel you on that. But now that I think this through and I say it out loud, I have to say, I am that person. Oh, I love a nail walk-in. So you got to understand a lady's logic because in my, and men who like, uh, who like manicures and pedicures, you, I don't like to make an appointment for stuff like that because I, I don't, I, I it's not, um, something that I have to have. I, I don't have the time to have that be a regular thing. I only, I can only get it when I have the time and as like a, a luxury add on to my life. So I need them to accommodate me and my walk in. So I actually understand that sign, but that was kind of funny. Uh, I agree with where you were going, but I understand that business model because it's probably more of their business is the walk-ins. Am I right, ladies? Um, I'm perpetually getting a jail, 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 getting out of jail, the jail of life. Oh, I meant to talk about uh, Schopenhauer. This is good, though, because I'll do some more uh, reading about because I'm um, going to be in Connecticut on Valentine's Day. Matt was hilarious. He's like, you on stage talking about love people who come out on Valentine's day, you should do it. It's going to be great. And I was, I don't know. I just looked at him and he's like, he goes, well, we never do anything anyway. And he laughs. <laughs> oh, you got to love love. So yeah, I was talking to my friend about, cause he was saying that Schopenhauer is the one that said that, uh, um, you can't know love unless you know hate. And I just watched this YouTube video real quick. That's how we learn, right? Instead of reading his books, I just watch a summary on YouTube, but it, but it was about, um, how he was the first philosopher to bring in, um, the teachings of Buddha in, and in, in, it influenced his thinking. And, uh, so that's where he gets that love from hate thing, but his, uh, he's pretty hilarious because he, uh, talks about who, who we're attracted to is, biological. So he came up with that, articulated that, that we are oftentimes attracted to somebody that isn't necessarily going to make us happy or be a good match. In fact, oftentimes we're attracted just because we want to make good offspring because that's the drive of life to move forward. And he talks about how, how miserable life is. And it says in the end of his life, he ended up with his poodle and that the neighbors called, called it Mrs. Schopenhauer because he, he was unlucky at love. <laughs> anyway, more to come on that. And the, um, love set that I will be preparing. And, um, um, one more base ba- ba- basketball game today. Wish us luck only had two cups of coffee maybe i'll have uh, three more okay thanks for tuning in hope you're well hope you are not too cold wherever you are we are at a beautiful 70 degrees here in los angeles people were collecting oranges from their tree yesterday a full bag um so we don't get much of a winter here we like it when it rains so hopefully we'll get some more of that and um take care bye